Good morning. We're going to finish up our pump control uh, design by looking at some preventative maintenance capabilities and uh, kind of a review of overall what we've done. We have a micro PLC that has uh, eight inputs and four outputs. It's DC powered. We've used it to uh, provide a start stop for a classic pump application. We've used one of the inputs to monitor the uh, seal leak detector on the pump. We've used another one of the inputs to monitor the uh, thermal contact for thermal overload condition. We've used one of the outputs to uh, start a motor with a pump motor through a contactor. We've used the feedback from the contactor that tells us it's, it's actually closed uh, to make sure that uh, there hasn't been a failure in the external circuitry. The last thing we want to do is add in the capability of monitoring the amount of power being used by the pump. Uh, that gives us a pretty good indication of uh, how the system is running. A current sensor, uh, look at some of the typical specs that you would have on one. We see that as the current flows through the sensor itself, it's going to generate a linear amount of uh, milliamps out. Uh, this can be applied across the dropping resistor to be converted into a voltage very easily. And we've shown that we expect a pump in this case to be running within a specified operating range. And that, of course, translates to a specified voltage or current range. To look at our application, I've uh, taken the previous uh, video open and uh, added in a few features. One of the things I've done is I've put in this uh, seal fault. I've taken this signal, inverted it, and generated an internal relay contact called seal fault. I've uh, also added in a uh, threshold detector for the uh, current. If you've been following along, you'll recognize that just as I've used a threshold detector for the seal input, I've used one down here. The difference this time is instead of relying on uh, this giving me hysteresis, I want this to trap a valid band. So I've assumed that my voltage input should be between 5 and 6 volts. Uh, if the current is correct. If it's outside of that range, I want this output to be triggered off. That would turn this point on and uh, that will enable half of this AND gate. The other half of the AND gate is triggered by the pump being turned on. We go through a time on delay as we did up here. This time we don't reset the time on delay, so after it's timed out, and we've set its time to 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds of, uh, of the pump being on, then this output would go active. If this um, current hasn't been satisfied, this output would be active. Those two signals combine together to generate a alarm condition up here. I've taken that same signal and I've called it uh, current fault. I've uh, also changed the displays around a bit. Um, on the main screen, I just show the start condition and whether the pump is on. That's really all the operator run, really cares about during the uh, normal course of business. Um, I've added a second screen, which is a maintenance screen that you could scroll to to look at uh, running conditions. It shows the current level of the seal leak input up here and the amount of current draw uh, down here, and whether it's in a, a fault condition as determined by, by this level. To run a program, um, we'll start it up and we immediately have an error condition because the thermal overload hasn't been satisfied. So we'll satisfy that. We assume that the alarm is enabled and uh, we see that we have a current fault condition because there's no current flowing. But since the pump isn't on, that's not getting through the AND gate, so it's not triggering a flashing light. We we'll start up the pump, and it won't start because we have this out of range. The pump is now running uh, within 
five seconds we have to satisfy the current flowing and this time it was timing out when it hits 10 seconds we see that we indicate that we have an error condition because we've had no current flowing through the motor so if we bring this up to a valid range between five and six we now have current flowing through the motor the alarm condition is being satisfied the pump is on and things are running quite nicely if we take a look at our main or, uh, maintenance screen, we see that the seal leak level is at 8.21. Uh, An astute operator would say that should be up close to 10. I probably have a leak condition developing, not enough to impact the starting of the motor, but it's something that I should be looking at. The amount of current flowing is at 5.36. It means it's uh, drying liquid. Nothing is jamming the impeller, so everything is good on that screen. And uh, if we do want to go and look at the uh, current situation, we see that both the thermal contact, thermal input and the contact input has been satisfied. So that's given us an overview of the overall operation of a pump controller. Um, we've taken a very simple concept of a start-stop circuit for a pump. We've added in the ability to do uh, leak detection on the seals. We've added in a thermal overload protection to uh, control the starting and the stopping of the motor. We've uh, put in feedback from the contactor so that we know that the when the pump output actually goes on, it turns on the contactor. And then we've added in uh, current capability, current monitoring capability to know that the motor is running within a specified load and there's nothing jamming or impeding the flow of the liquid. In our alarm con situation, we have a blinking light that would be triggered if any fault happens. If we have a thermal overload, this light starts blinking, the siren goes off, and the operator can silence it and address the thermal overload situation. That pretty much wraps up our application. I, um, I'd like to thank you for following through on the videos. Uh, hopefully you've got a feeling for the type of power that you get out of a micro PLC. Uh, this overall application, which isn't terribly complicated, but it's pretty complete for a pump controller, has required a total of 16 blocks. Uh, we have 320 blocks available in the uh, APB microcontroller, so that gives you an idea of how much more you could add if you wanted to get very fancy. You can do data logging, you can add in Modbus so that all the parameters and statistics could be collected centrally. Uh, a lot of different capabilities that you can add in. Back and uh, look at some of the application notes. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. We do our very best to help you out. Thank you again. And goodbye.